people call it earthing. I'm, I go outside and put your feet on the ground. Okay. Like call it whatever you want to, but just go outside, put your feet on the ground, put your hands in the soil and like feel that it moves through your heart. Feel the electricity from the earth, Uranus and Taurus, and let that energy flow into your heart, Leo. Right. And allow that creative expression to occur. Hey, Joji here. I'm Astrology Hub's podcast producer and an astrologer over at Astrologer Connect. I just wanted to make sure that you knew about Astrologer Connect's Reading Bonanza Month. We're going to have all sorts of special events, but the biggest thing is that any reading booked in April. So even if you're having a reading all the way in December, as long as you book it this month, you are eligible for a 20% off by using the code April 20. And if you actually go right now, call for an instant reading, you actually get the first 10 minutes for free. Again, this is happening all throughout the month. And to claim your discount, all you have to do is just go to astrologyhub.com forward slash connect and use the code April 20. All right, I'll see you soon. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to your weekly astrological weather. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Amanda Poole Walsh. I'm the founder of Astrology Hub. I am so thrilled that you're here. For those of you who are new to our channel, you have just joined a worldwide astrological conversation that's happening here every single week. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you know whenever we have a new video here. I am so happy to be here this week with evolutionary astrologer and herbalist Cameron Allen. He has formal education from the School of Evolutionary Herbalism and the School of Evolutionary Astrology and is Reiki attuned by Norma De Jesus. He's currently working on a 200-hour registered yoga teacher training in Kundalini Yoga from Delta Groove Yoga and training to become an Ayurvedic practitioner. He is involved in several astrological organizations. He's the co-founder of Memphis Black Healers Collective, board member of ESAR, board member of Fit Organics, and co-founder of Ascendant Assemblies. Cameron, you are busy. He has been an astrologer with us for the Inner Circle many times. He's taught several courses with us, including Health Secrets of the Planets and the Zodiac, and a holistic approach to the houses, all the links to those courses and workshops are in the description of this video. He is also a featured astrologer on our Astrologer Connect reading platform. This is the last week that you can book a reading with any of the astrologers on our reading platform for 20% discount. So if you book in the month of April, you get 20% off your reading. You can have the reading whenever it works for you and whenever it works for the astrologer's schedule. But if you book this month, you, you will get that 20% off. So this is our grand kickoff for that reading platform. And I have had several readings with Cameron. My love has also had a reading with Cameron. He's amazing. So, so helpful. If you have anything going on with your body, in any way, shape, or form, and you want some astrological guidance for what could be going on, if you're trying to, um, you know, find a rhythm or something you can do to support your body in a uh, deeper way, in a better way, using astrology as a guide, Cameron's amazing with that and so much more. He does, he does it all. So check him out on the platform. That's astrologyhub.com slash Cameron Connect. Or you can go to astrologyhub.com slash connect and just check out all the astrologers we have there and make sure you take advantage of your 20% discount this month. All right. So Cameron, we're in between eclipses. Mm -hmm. What's happening this week? Yeah. So it's been really, it's really interesting thinking about like the, the bigness and the aliveness that eclipses can bring, you know, and even when I say aliveness, the aliveness of being alert more than even aliveness, because sometimes it actually is the thing that puts us to sleep, right? But in between eclipses, it's something that I find that's like really, really interesting to feel into and think about. Well, during this eclipse period, in between the two eclipses, it seems like things are actually kind of chill. They're actually kind of relaxed. And I think that's a good thing because both of the eclipses are ruled by Mars, right? And so both of the, since both of the eclipses are ruled by Mars and then Mars is Cancer, it's like a kind of a difficult time, right? It's like this energy of, 
I want to go forward and be assertive and do all the things, but feelings don't really care about that a lot of the time. So sometimes it can be a little difficult to get that thing started. Also, this is the first eclipse that we're having in Aries in this next eclipse cycle, even though the nodes haven't made it there yet. So that also this eclipse cycle will be the last eclipse cycle. I mean, the last one where the nodes are in Taurus and Scorpio before they move forward and but later on in the year. So just being mindful of that. And so what does that mean? It means since things this week are kind of chill and there's not too much action happening, that means the invitation from my lens is to be with it, sink into it, digest what just happened in the last eclipse and be in a, as restful state as possible that you can be. Right. Think about going into a tunnel and you can and there's light out and then you go into the tunnel and it's like, take that time to funnel what you need while you're in that tunnel to relax yourself before the next eclipse comes. So just really being mindful to feel in that, to sink into that. That's what I would say the most important thing is also being mindful that eclipses oftentimes can bring up a lot of our insecurities just from like a personal level, right? On a broader scale, it does a lot of other things, but on a personal level, eclipses just bring up a lot of emotional insecurities. It's about the things that we can't see, right? So it's eclips eclipsing the sun and the moon. It's about spirit in your body and are they coherent together or are they not? So this week, giving yourself a pause to feel into that, think about that. Also, really paying attention to what Mars is doing this week and seeing where that's at in your chart specifically, not just me saying, oh, this is what's going to happen this week, right? It's like thinking about what Mars is doing this week for you. And since there's not so much going on, I think it's important to even take the time to focus in more on how this is reflecting in your chart. This is a time to explore what you're trying to burst forth into right? Burst forth into being the eclipse that just happened in Aries. And during this period of time, during this week, be mindful of the way in which you might have stuffed down those deep emotions because they might be about to come up during the eclipse in Scorpio, right? So it's like head first, what are you trying to do? And then like being in this period and observing and watching before it even comes, because you can see or it'll show you what you have been stuffing down. So just being mindful of that as all these cycles are beginning to end, it's a really important thing when cycles close to look back and have a seat with it. So that's my invitation for the week as a whole. Okay, you said something about Mars. To mm -hmm. look at where Mars is in your chart and what Mars is doing for you personally. Obviously, people can get readings if they don't know how to look at their chart and they could have an astrologer look at it and interpret for them. But for those that actually know how to look at their chart and can interpret, where are they going to look? Like, what are they specifically looking at right now with Mars? Mm -hmm. So we would be looking at Mars. And since it's in Cancer, oftentimes there's, since there's a difficulty with letting the emotions just flow and move on an instinctual basis, you would look where that's at in your chart and you would see. How does this correspond to an area of life? So for me, it's in the seventh house. So I'm thinking about what are my emotional insecurities and how am I just asserting how I feel? Because sometimes that can be a difficult thing, right? Asserting how you feel. It's like really when we feel, it's like something that's like very inward and it's about me. No matter what story I make up, how I feel is how I feel. So how do I learn how to assert what I feel? You know, owning it feeling it, and then just allowing that to express itself, right? Mm. So that's an example. Cameron, we had someone in our inner circle actually posted something in our private community about Mars and cancer. And she said, I don't know if it was a sort of like a download she had or just a, an insight that Mars and cancer feels like the warrior who's been off at war, who's now come home to a bustling household of normally women, right? Who've been, who've stayed at home to take care of the family and the home. They've gotten into their own rhythm and flow over the last however many years or whatever that he's been gone. And so he's, he's coming in, he's, he's used to a certain level of structure and being able to direct, you know, what needs to happen and things like that. And they also have had their own 
you know, rhythm and flow. And and they're now asking him to take his his shoes off at the door. And you know, he so he's having to fit into this 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 world that he hasn't been in. And so it made me it made me think about the vulnerability of Mars in this kind of scenario. If you're thinking about that analogy of Mars and Cancer being like the warrior coming home and having to like fit into this environment that he's not used to and how vulnerable and um, disorienting that would be. Yeah. And also for him to, to and, and to maybe even feel somewhat purposeless, you know, not know what his role is or where he fits in. So what you're saying here about where are our, our emotional insecurities, where are our vulnerabilities, and how do we effectively communicate those to other people without getting frustrated and, you know, the, all the other things that, that can happen when we're stuffing those things down. Does that resonate exactly. with you? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because also the warrior is like always task driven. So it's always just trying to do something, do something in cancer and that like emotional feeling, nurturing kind of energy. It's not always about what you do. Sometimes it's about just how you feel and that can be enough. Right. But when it comes to when it comes to like it's like so the warrior coming home, right? It's like somebody tells me to take my shoes off. Why? Right. I'm automatically being combative when really it's just like it feels good in here. It's nice. It's cozy. It's like it feels nice to not have you track all the mud from outside into the house. You know, it's like it just feels nice. And so it's like it's difficult. Those two things just they have a conflicting energy oftentimes. So, yeah, that makes total sense. And I love that. Whoever said that it's spot on. I know. I loved it too. I, I made a comment under, I was like, oh, that's so insightful. And it, it gives me a different perspective of this warrior. I think so often we, you know, Mars gets cast in this light as, as being so aggressive and harsh that to also think about where the challenges would be and being that sort of Martian energy, you know, that like always forward moving energy, where would that make life really challenging? You know? Um, so are you saying that in between this eclipse, we're in the in between eclipses right now that we might have a hard time asserting our will right now and that the focus doesn't really need to be in asserting our will right now that the focus needs to be a little bit more inward in sort of like that cancer sort of energy yeah i wouldn't say it's person dependent i always look at things um i always like to use extremes even though i'm understanding that there's a spectrum always right and so on one end is somebody who feels all these feelings and it's like the Mars energy feels like stuck inside. So there's like this resentment or like, I don't know how to express my feelings or I don't know how to feel my feelings fully. And then other people are just, they're just having at it. They feel this is coming out right now, like with a sword, right? And maybe not even owning their feelings. I feel this way. Here's the sword. You know, it's like, whoa, like, chill, you know, and not owning, not actually taking the time to be like, this is what I feel and I'm actually feeling it. And just being reactive to what's happening on the external, in the external world. So always being mindful of those polarities and that spectrum in general, but with Mars and Cancer, it gets amped up a little bit. Because even back in the day, like in the Islamic period, they would say Mars and Cancer oftentimes is what brought war. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, super curious. Huh. Do you have insights into why that would be? I would say because it's the summer, really, at the end of the day, I would say that oh, it's, it's the, the summer energy, the right? Like the yeah. idea of symbolic time being like when the sun goes into cancer is summertime. So people aren't going to war in winter when it was back in the day when we didn't have certain resources like we do now. So Mars going there would also be Mars being at its summer point. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Now, you also said that this is the last eclipse. This is the last series of eclipses that's happening in Taurus and Scorpio. And you said that this is a time to wrap some things up. Mm -hmm. this, these, this eclipse cycle is the last one where the nodes will be in Taurus and Scorpio. There'll be another eclipse in Taurus later in the year, but the nodes won't be there with it. Oh, I got you. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so what does that mean for us? So that means there's been an area of development in your life that's been going on for the last year and a half or so. And whatever that has been, it's been coming to strong stops and strong beginnings or changes of direction. And so now you can start looking forward to the next cycle of that. 
right? Sometimes we're like plan for things. And it's like, oh, I feel, I feel this new thing coming. Oh my gosh, I want it so bad. And it's like, hey, you're still actually in between that. So it's like, you can kind of relax and just like look to where the nodes are at in your chart and see what house they might be changing to. Or if they're shifting, it's changing signs, but it might not change houses, depending on what house system you use. But just being mindful of what that shift will do. Okay. Yeah. Let's go through the days. Can you walk us through mm-hmm. the astrology of each day and just highlight any any particular days or transits that are important for us to pay attention to? Yeah, before I do that, I also wanted to say, like, being mindful of, like, you know, everybody was so excited about Pluto coming into Aquarius. And now Pluto is like really slowing down, like literally from April 24th to May 8th, Pluto will be at the same minute and, and hear that, right? Cause like a lot of times like, it's going to be at the same degree for two days. No, not just the same degree, but the same minute. So also this is another reflection of why I'm saying, Hey, everybody slow down. Because there is like a deeper process unfolding that oftentimes we don't pay attention to when it comes to the outer planets and how they shift. It's not something that's always visible, right? And that's why they're the outer planets. It's kind of beyond us a little bit if we're not using our special goggles to be able to see the lens of the unseen. So being mindful that that's taking place underneath the surface while this eclipse period is happening as well. What? How would you interpret Pluto and Aquarius at the same minute for literally like a couple weeks, right? Yeah. What? Is there something specific about that that degree or something specific about Pluto being in an Aquarius that we can sort of contemplate for this period of time? Yeah. What I would contemplate is what have you felt since Pluto entered Aquarius? And what were you so excited about? even though you were knowing that Pluto's going to go right back into Capricorn. And so if you feel like, oh, I have this new thing on the horizon and I feel, if it's something that's really, really big, just know that it might be doing this dance with Pluto. Whether that's a difficult thing going on in your life that you've been trying to empower yourself through, whether that's a big change based off of it changing signs, which might make you change houses in your chart, really just being, being with it with, for a moment. And knowing that it's moving slow, so take your time with that, you know? Take your time with that. That's what I would say. And also, this feeling of moving forward and feeling like this sense of liberation. And it's like, I always think about like Pluto's like went into Aquarius and it's like, and it's like, and it's at 21 degrees and it's like, you're not done with Capricorn yet. And it just like pulls you back in there. Whether the pullback is good or bad, that was kind of dramatic, but no, it's like, (laughs) <laughs> but it is like this liberatory energy that people feel with Aquarius. And so going back into Capricorn is kind of heavier. Yes. Okay, Cameron, that's a great lay of the land for the whole week ahead. Let's mm-hmm. back up a little bit and go through each of the days just so we know what's happening each day and how to work with the energy. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to focus more on just like the embodiment qualities of everything more than anything. So it's like, I'm not going to tell you to give you an invite to rest and then not give you some simple tools to work with from that point or, or perspective. Love that about you, Cameron. Thank you. It's, yeah, it's so good to ground us here. Uh, so on April 24th, we have the moon in Gemini a little bit and then the moon moves into Cancer, right? So with the moon in Gemini, while it's going through the end of Gemini, it's going to square with Neptune. So of course, with Neptune, a lot of people talk about illusions and stuff like that. I would really say, what has your relationship been with the sound of your voice, right? Gemini, the moon going through Gemini and it like rules this space of the body. And then it's going into a square relationship with Neptune and Pisces. But Pisces is all about frequency and vibration. So if we have the moon's energy coming towards that, it's like, how can I use this energy flowing through here to connect with that other thing, that other thing being Neptune and Pisces? So when's the last time you did a mantra? When was the last time you just sung out loud? Whether it sounds good or not, it doesn't matter. It's a square. So, I mean, maybe it doesn't sound good, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Just like focus on getting that energy to flow, but not just simply getting the energy to flow. Try to get the energy to flow with something that feels like a higher resonance or a higher frequency or vibration or sound or God. Allah, creator, universe, whatever it is that you connect with. 
you know, it could even just be nature, listening to the crickets, listening to the birds, and then letting that energy flow with something larger than yourself and feeling into that. Yeah, and for those who are on the podcast, when you're saying, let the energy flow here, you're pointing to your mm -hmm. neck, right? So mm -hmm. sounds for yeah, those who are totally, not totally. doing the video. So yeah, absolutely. Sound to come through. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because Gemini is ruling the respiratory system, really. So it's like going up into the throat, even though Taurus is like technically a throat, but your, your respiratory system, your lungs and letting your lungs move is what I'm really trying to say there. Yeah. Also that day, Saturn in Pisces will be in a sextile with the sun in Taurus. So just being sure to feel into it, you feel like a little stagnant energy kind of there because Taurus has a tendency to have a slowness to it because it's fixed Earth. And Saturn is going to be in relationship with that sun that's already getting that fixed earth energy. So just being mindful of making sure you move your body, express yourself in the ways that feels good for you. Also, the sun's in Taurus. So things just like have a tendency to want to be more relaxed. So being in connection with Saturn might slow that down a little bit. And so also being mindful when I'm speaking up energetics, I'm not really just speaking on some abstract quality. It's like when I say these things, it's either something is going to stimulate you and have you more amped up or ready to go, or it's going to make you feel maybe dull, slow, heavy. And these are like tangible qualities. It's not like I'm saying some like airy fairy, like energetics, energetic frequency, blah, blah, blah. It's like not like that. It's like actually how you're going to feel potentially, depending on how it works with your chart. So just being mindful of that. And then also the moon is going to move into Cancer that night. And so with that, just feeling like the shift between Gemini to Cancer, and just feeling into that in general too. On April 25th, the moon is going to be in Cancer like the whole day. And the biggest thing that I highlighted that day is really just the moon's going to get really, 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 really close to Mars. So all those things I was saying about filling into Mars energy, the moon's going to bring that flow of energy there. So this is the day that I would even highlight even more about paying attention to that Mars energy because the moon is going to bring it down from the sublunar sphere. If you don't know what that means, it's just going to transport it from above to the below, right? And then also being mindful when the moon goes through Cancer, when Mars is there, this could also represent something like an upset stomach, potentially. It also could be an upset stomach, not just because of something you ate, but also the moon is going to be in a square relationship with Chiron that day as well. So just being energetically sensitive because Chiron's there, maybe some wounds might come up. But what I invite with Chiron always is not thinking about it as a wound, but thinking about it as what are my tools to work with wounds, right? So you might have a wound, that's fair, but do you have tools to work with that wound? And if you do have tools to work with wounds, when a wound comes up, do you use them, right? So that's a few layers there that you can feel into and move with throughout your process during that day as well. So April 26th, the moon is still in Cancer. And something big happens this day. It's something that oftentimes seems really dramatic to me, but it happens to be subtle to a lot of people. The moon is going to be in a square relationship with the eclipse that just happened, right? So we're going to be in the exact square relationship. So the, the last eclipse was at 29 Aries. So this... The Cancer moon will be going through the 29th degree, basically there. So just being mindful that whatever happened during that eclipse and what's going to happen next eclipse, you're in the, the stretching point of both of those two. You're in the exact middle of both of those. So be aware of that dynamic tension between that. The moon also is just going to happen, just so happens to be in a trine with Neptune. So it's like this outer planet energy happening there and it's going to be in opposition with Pluto. So it's like, that's really interesting to me. We have these eclipses happening, which oftentimes brings up things that we can't see. And then it's going to be in a trine with Neptune. That is like something that's oftentimes unconscious. And then it's going to be in opposition with Pluto, which also is bringing up unconscious material. So we got the middle point of the lights being out. And then we have unconscious processes kind of coming up in the sign of cancer. And we're going to be feeling the feels there. So that day, Really, my invitation would be, and this is the invitation that I give often and I will moving forward always and forever. But when the moon is in Cancer, my favorite thing to do almost always, turn on music 
that sounds like how you feel and just let the energy be in motion. Just let the energy be in motion. I will say this forever and ever until people tell me to stop. And then when they tell me to stop, I'm going to say it again. Because most of the times when I tell people to do this, when I ask them, did they do it? They said one time. Or they say, I tried it. It was great. I say, oh, so how's it been since then? And they stopped doing it. So I'm going to keep saying until everybody in the comment section says, Cameron, I've been doing it. Leave us alone. Okay? And then we can talk about it. I'll probably have questions then from there. Yeah. I love that. So basically turn on, if you're feeling angry, turn on ang like music that sounds angry. If you're feeling happy, turn on happy music. If you're sad, turn on something that makes you sad and allow the music to, to sort of match the feeling that you have so that it can move more freely. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And even if people don't want to do that with music, you know, oftentimes I just have people find the, the location where the issue is and just like move in and out of it. Just get the energy in motion. It's so simple, so easy. Just like getting it moving so it doesn't get stagnant because we can't always just control our feelings and our feelings don't care about us trying to control them anyway to begin with. But we can always move our body and let the energy flow better. Right. So just being mindful of those things. So on April 27th, we have the moon moving into Leo and the moon will be in conjunct Saturn that day, early on in that day. And so oftentimes the in conjunction is an aspect that is of no aspect. So that is to say that it's not in relationship with each other because they, they're blind to each other. But we know when we can't see something and we get blindsided, that's when some of the worst things happen to us, right? So it's like being mindful that the moon in conjunct Saturn, there might be something going on. You might feel a certain type of way, but you might, you might not know exactly where it's coming from. So look into your chart and see where things, where the moon is at in Leo, at the beginning of Leo, and then look where Pisces is at and consider what house is there in your chart and just make a simple prompt. Don't be elaborate about it. Just literally, what does that house mean? Even if you don't know what a house means right now in this moment, you can literally click on Google, see what one house means and just say, this means this, this means that. And then just move forward from there and feel into it. Right. Super simple. You could watch our house series on the podcast. We did all, every single house and Cameron was one of our houses. I think the sixth mm -hmm. house. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I interviewed uh, 12 different astrologers and we went through all the houses. So if you need more information about what each house means, then you can see that still on the podcast. Just go to astrologyhub.com and then put like house series in or just scroll mm -hmm. on the videos for house series. You'll find the house that you're looking for. Beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love that series. I already watched it twice. Learned a lot there. I love it. Good. <laughs> watched it twice. That's so cool. Oh, I'm a student forever. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, with the moon in conjunct Saturn. So, Leo rules the cardiovascular system as a whole, and Pisces rules the feet, right? And so, even though I'm using, so it, Leo rules the heart, Pisces rules the feet. And so the question is, is the blood flowing from your chest all the way down to your feet? And just feeling into that. So maybe putting your hand on your heart and then just stomping your feet on the ground, stomping your feet on the ground and breathing until you start to feel that circulation move through your body. And being mindful as humans, we have these simple things that we could do. You know, sometimes we're like looking for this complex answer to just like simple solutions, you know? So just being mindful of that always and forever. Something else there too, the in conjunction can be about, are you able to express yourself from your heart in a way that feels rooted and grounded, right? Your feet on the ground, but like being able to speak from your heart. Like, so allowing that practice also to connect with something that might come up for you in that day as well. Also that day, the moon is going to be square the sun. And so it's the first quarter square. So the question is, what happened at that eclipse point? Or what happened during that new moon? And just feel it into where you at with that progress. Do you feel like it's starting to land a little bit more? Can you feel the tangibility of it? Right? So just being mindful of that and feeling into it as you have followed the other lunar cycles, if you do that. And if not, then it's a good place to start. Also, Mars and Cancer will be square Chiron and Aries. And so this is actually like, even though this is like the day I'm talking about it, 
this is kind of like happening throughout the whole week. So the thing I was talking about earlier about Chiron and the toolkit and being energetically sensitive and then all the things I was talking about with war, we were talking about war and cancer, infuse those two things and seal into that. Like what is going on there, right? It's a really interesting dynamic and I actually wrote a few things about it, but I don't, I kept feeling different things every time I came to it, you know? And so even though it'd be cool of me as an astrologer to say, this is what it's going to be. It's like, I really want to invite everybody to feel into this because when it comes to Chiron, it is about an energy an antenna, right? Tom Jacobs says it's about an energy antenna and I find it to be really, really true. So I want everybody to really feel into like what's going on in a subtle way that day in that square. Okay, explain that a little bit more. So Chiron is an energy antenna, meaning where we have Chiron in our chart and or if Chiron's in, in, in is in transit in a particular place, that our energy antenna is going to be attuned to that? Or can you explain what you mean by that a little bit yeah. more? It's, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be either attuned or it's going to be super sensitive. And sensitive doesn't mean not attuned, but in this case, I'm using it, the definition as feeling sensitive as in, oh, no, I feel sensitive. And like it can, I'm kind of like trying to shy away from it. Ah, so, so like if you're insecure about something, for example, and someone makes a comment and they don't mean anything by it, but because you're so insecure about that thing, you take it as an insult exactly. or you take it as, as a criticism. Is exactly, that exactly. Right. And so like, that's the whole thing within an antenna and antenna is going to be like attuned as in the color green, the color green, I'm activated. I hear it. But it also can be, I'm attuned and it's like, they said something about ugly feet, you know, and it's like, ah, my feet, you know, it's like, yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah exactly. so it's yeah. like two men on like in two different ways, you know? And so it's just like that kind of energetic sensitivity where it's like, I feel that no matter what's going on, I always feel that. Because that's the thing that made me feel left out, that made me feel rejected in the past. Right. So, so where, actually, I'll be sensitive to it. So where Chiron is in your chart is where you may be extra sensitized to any sort of uh, feedback or criticism or, you know, anything around that kind of issue that is identified by where it is in your chart. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And depending on how somebody's worked with it, they can be extra sensitive to it as I see that you had that because I used to have it. Yeah. So I know how to help you with my toolkit. Right. I love mm -hmm. that. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. So April 28th, the moon is in Leo again here. And with the moon being in Leo, it's, it's going to go into a square relationship with Uranus that day. And so just being mindful to take care of your nervous system. I would really say, you know, the people call it earthing. I'm, I go outside and put your feet on the ground. Okay. Like call it whatever you want to, but just go outside, put your feet on the ground, put your hands in the soil and like feel that move through your heart. Feel the electricity from the earth, Uranus and Taurus, and let that energy flow into your heart, Leo. Right. And allow that creative expression to occur. It's going to happen uh, in like the midday around, well, I guess it depends where you live. It's happening about the midday though here in the United States. So just be mindful that you can check it out on any Astro Seek or any tracker that you have and feel into it when it goes direct. That's what I invite people to do the most because that's when you actually start embodying and feeling what's happening there, right? So it's super important to always tune in from that space of I know what this is because I just experienced that. So on April 29th, the moon will go into Virgo. And when the moon goes into Virgo, the first thing I always invite everybody to do is to organize things. And here specifically, since I'm talking about the body, I'm talking about the digestive tract. So what are, the, what are the ways that you haven't been having an organized or regimented schedule with your food or your eating habits? Even being organized with your food doesn't necessarily mean eating at a specific time, even though that might be ideal. It could just be, are you organizing yourself and taking your time with your food, right? Do you understand how a human is organized and how it's ideal to digest food when you're calm, when you're not in a state of stress and in fight or flight mode, 
that might be the organization you're looking for. It might not be, oh, I got everything in pre-packed and reg- regimented. It might not be that for you. Oftentimes it really isn't, right? So just being with that and being mindful throughout that process. Also, the moon's going to start feeling a little uh, tension from Saturn that day. It's going to go into an opposition as soon as the moon goes in Virgo. So just being mindful of that. And then there, something easy that you could do is feel the connection between your gut and your feet, right? And so all these things I'm saying, you can kind of feel this pattern that I have going on, like feeling the energy flow from one place where the moon is at to another place where the energy is in another sign, right? And Saturn happens to be kind of, oftentimes it's heavy in a in a malefic way or a not so feeling good way. But this is actually an amazing thing. And I've been feeling into it a lot. So if Saturn's going to make my feet feel heavy, what am I doing to actually feel rooted and grounded in a way that makes me feel like I feel heavy enough to hold things that I'm like bearing weight to, you know, or like existing with, let's say. Also something else going on that day, uh, the moon is going to be in a trine with Vesta. And Vesta also this whole week, I didn't talk about it before, but Vesta is going to be in a conjunction with the North Node. So also all these things I'm talking about, like we want to move forward and all this stuff is about to start. And it's like, well, what are you devoted to, you know, moving forward? Like, what is your identity trying to be devoted to? And just being mindful on this day that you can start to organize things in a way where whatever you're devoted to moving forward, you just put things in place, put things in place because that Pluto is going back. It's ecl- the other eclipse is about to come. But think about what you're being devoted to moving forward and start to organize things a little bit there. Cameron, one thing that came up recently, again, in an inner circle conversation with some members was around the Aquarian sort of artificial intelligence Mm -hmm. direction and the whole like development of technology and how that's really going to change things in the next 20 years and Mm -hmm. how people are feeling uneasy about that. Like there's a lot of people that have a lot of like serious concerns about where things are going. And one of the things that I got from all of the amazing astrologers at the Game Changing Transits event that you were a part of was that in in this time of great change, it's very important for us to very to be very clear on what our values are. Like, and I and the way I've been thinking about it are, you know, what are our non-negotiables? What are the things that mm-hmm. no matter what technology can make easier, or no matter what technology could streamline, or you know, whatever the promise is, right? Whatever ailments that it's going to cure, and you know, all the all the different promises that are being that will be made i'm sure mm-hmm. where where are your own non-negotiables and one of the things i was thinking about is how connection to nature for me is one of those things that is like no matter what happens i always need that on some level connection to the rhythms of the seasons connection to you know the the traditions of 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 change during the season and and being mindful of it and paying attention to it and celebrating it with my daughters, for example, you know, we, we do little rituals for spring and for fall and for winter and, you know, keeping those things intact. When you're talking about this, what you just talked about with Vesta and North Node and, you know, what's valuable to you, is, is this the kind of thing that you're talking about this, this sort of self-inquiry, like where, what are your values and what are the things that you need to just continue to prioritize in order to stay aligned with the the deepest parts of you or am I totally yeah. off track? No, that was like perfection, you know, cause I said the word devotion and it's like, you know, Vesta kept the, the hearth going right. and that's what you're saying, right? You're like, you're going to keep working that fire. You're going to keep that flame going. Yeah. Right. So like what torch do you have and which one, and how are you carrying it forward? Okay, great. You know, and that's what you're saying. So it's like, that's perfection. Exactly. It, it seems like such an important contemplation in this time that we're in where there's so much change. And from what yeah. all of you astrologers shared, it's going to accelerate at like mind-blowing speed. And, and yeah. there, will be, there will be things that are shifting that, that you know, all, all, I just kept hearing you, you guys say over and over, just be intentional. Just 
don't just go along with everything, like be intentional about the way that you, you engage and learn about it and make sure that it's in alignment with your values, et cetera. So first step would be to figure out or be very clear on what your values are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah a thousand percent. And I also would say, are you looking at the big, like mainstream ideas of what AI or technology can do? Or are you actually like thinking about, huh, what would be really helpful for a machine to do for me? Or, you know, it's like, that's, Something that could really be revolutionary for you at the same time. And yeah. it also could help what you are devoted to. So yes. if everybody would focus on that lens, maybe first, or if, especially if they're far on the other side, if you focus there first, then you can figure out the ways in which you want to stay away from things, right? Because it's about where you're creating from. I love that. What? How can technology help you with what you are devoted to? I think sometimes about what we could be doing with astrology, with with more, um, you know, instead of it being so flat, you know, it's like so flat on a screen, but like, what if we could be in it? You know, like we could, we could visually walk into our chart and like experience it in such a different way. I feel like there could be amazing things to develop from technology and the way we learn astrology, the way we experience astrology, the way we use astrology to navigate, you know, I think it could be yeah. awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. I feel like I've experienced that so many times. That's why I'm like over here laughing because I think like, I've done that. Like, you know, walked into my own chart and like was seeing the spaces and the houses and stuff in my own. Yeah. Like, do we really need virtual reality for it? Or can we <laughs> show our eyes and use our imagination <laughs> to do that too? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It can be both in. And I like that, you know, and even right. some simple things like with, um, when we think of technology, oftentimes people are thinking like these like big widgets and gadgets and stuff like that. But one simple thing, I'll give this as just a, creative prompt or idea. One thing that I do in the winter time, I get um, yellow lights. I have yellow lights. So when it's like dark out and I'm like really sleepy and it's hard for me to get up, I turn on the yellow light and it makes me like feel like it's sunlight out. Mm -hmm. Right. That's a light bulb. And so when people think about technology, they're like AI in the future. And, and it's like, well, we never had light bulbs that gave off low heat that wasn't actually bothersome, but also made us feel awake. Yes. And then you can use the red light to make you feel calm. And it's like that can actually help your hormonal cycle if you have issues with um, your circadian rhythm, rather. Yes. And so just being mindful, it could be something this simple. Yes. And that's super helpful. Because 20 years ago, it could happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, th those kinds of things are being developed all the time now, too. Yeah, you're right. We do kind of go to the negative, but there's there's tons of emerging technology that's very positive. Yeah. and I, And I like this idea of, what are you devoted to and how can technology be, a, how can you use technology to be of service to the thing that you're devoted to? Right. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. good. All right. I know we yeah. still have a day or two to go, to go through, right? Yeah. Yeah. We have one more day. The, uh, the 30th, we have uh, the moon in Virgo still. So the thing I was saying with Saturn still applies, but it's moving away from Saturn during the day. And so it's going to start going into a trine with the sun and Mercury and Really, the way I was feeling into that is just, again, I was feeling into the stomach. I was really actually, I kind of, not to be, to be quite honest, I kind of bypassed the sun and I was just thinking about how the moon is ruled by Virgo. I mean, by ruled by Mercury. And then just feeling into the digestive tract and then really trying to get the nervous system to calm down in the stomach. And so there's a few ways to go about this. A lot of times I just get people to put their hand there, really. You know, even thinking about Taurus being the senses and Mercury connecting with or the moon, connecting with Mercury in its own sign that rules the digestive tract, just putting either your hands on your stomach or something else heavy there. Like I was saying again at the beginning, Taurus is heavy, right? So again, we're using these energetics. None of them are inherently good or bad when we know how to use them. So if I put something heavy on my stomach, not like squishing me, of course. But something heavy on my stomach, it makes me feel held down, right? And then just breathing into that. And letting it organize things in your digestive tract. And it really just like reviewing what's been going on with my stomach. Have things I've been eating been, been of value to me or been of service to me? Am I processing this? Does this feel luxurious? Does this feel good? Does this feel yummy? Right. So all these are super simple things that we can do. 
using astrology in like there's many other ways. And there's even an orientation that I could help give. And that'll happen sooner or later. You know, so just being mindful. This is a, I know this is like a perspective that a lot of people haven't heard necessarily besides for me when I come on, but I added a little bit extra with it this time, right? And so always thinking the planets and astrology means this, but it also can mean this and that and this and that. And you can begin to like bring all those things together because you can do the linear logical, well, this day, this planet does this, so this is going to happen. It's like, but what are you going to do? How are you going to be in a relationship with the energy? I love that so much, Cameron. And what I what is exciting to me about this week is that it seems like we'll have the time and space to actually do some of these practices that you have brought up. I know sometimes the 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 astrology of a week is is intense and it's demanding and there's a lot going on. And so sometimes people's lives get very full. But it sounds like the way that this week is set up is it is designed for us to be doing more of these contemplation things, for us to be feeling the feeling the things in our bodies and really being mindful of the way that we're digesting um, our lives. And that this is going to be somewhat of a, a review of the last year and a half on one level, also a review of the last couple months since Pluto's gone into Aquarius. So there's there's a, there's kind of a lot to reflect on. Um, and I love what you've reminded us about this week, that this is a time to relax, that um, that that it's pretty chill, <laughs> that, that the week is chill and that we'll be as much as we can be in a restful state, the better. And that we have this opportunity to really contemplate our is our spirit and our body, are they coherent? Are we feeling a coherency in between them? And, um, you know, I think a lot of a lot of people I, I, that that that's like a constant course correct, right? Because because we can get on dire in directions that don't feel in total alignment. So the more frequently we're asking that question, the less likely it is that you know two years pass, three years pass, four years pass, five, you know, a lifetime passes. And it's like, oh shoot, I wasn't in, I wasn't in coherence with my spirit or with my soul and what I'm here to do. So I love that. Um, be mindful of what you've stuffed down is one of the other uh, main things, themes that you brought up in the beginning. And what are you bursting forth into? Uh, so one question I had from the very beginning that I'm just asking you now, when you were describing the energy of this week between eclipses, and you were talking about how chill it is and it's kind of restful. Would you say that it's kind of like the eye of the storm? Exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And even like sometimes things seem chill because something just like got amped. Like if there's like a wave, you know, it's like before it comes, everybody's like, oh no. And then like it comes and then everything is just like, okay, like it happened. Everything's not necessarily just okay as in I feel chill. But it's like, okay, I can chill for a moment or I can pause for a second because that was a lot right there, right? So it's like a lot, okay, let me like regather myself. There's not too much going on this week, but I still have to like face what just happened and then something else is about to come as well. Yeah, well, it sounds like the more we do, the, the digestion piece and the rest and relax and the contemplation piece, the the more energy we'll have for whatever is next. Absolutely. That's right. exactly. Yeah. Cameron, thank you so much for coming and sharing the weather with us. If you love Cameron's astrology, you can still get a reading with him for 20% off, which is kind of outrageous. Like that is a huge, huge offer that we're making right now for this promotional period for Astrologer Connect for the like very official kickoff that we're finally doing on the platform. So you can get 20% off with Cameron or with any of the astrologers that are there. There's about 15 astrologers that you can choose from. You can see which astrologer and the type of astrology they do both resonates with you, but also get, can give you answers to the question that you have right now. Like sometimes you, you have a question about timing very specifically. You want to know when to launch a business. You want to know when to get married, you know, that's a very specific timing decision. So Joe G's amazing at that. There's several astrologers that are just like, actually, you too. You do electional astrology too, right, Cameron? Yeah. Yeah, I do. 
Yeah. So, th- so those timing questions are really specific, right? But then maybe you have questions about your body and how to best care for your body with the current astrology, with the year ahead astrology, with whatever it is. Cameron's an amazing choice for that. Maybe you are going to be moving and you want to know where's a great place on the planet for you to move to find love or to start your career or to start your family. I mean, there's a lot of different reasons why you may want to move and what you're looking for in the place that you move. And there are astrologers that focus on that too. So you can go to astrologyhub.com slash connect, look through the different categories of life, and then see the astrologers that focus and really specialize in those areas because there's different astrological tools and techniques that you would use for all the things that I just mentioned and more. So it's not a one size fits all. And you could get a reading with Cameron this time for your body and then get a reading with Gemini Brett next time for where should you move and then get a sole purpose reading with Andrea Michelle at some point, you know? So there's, there's a lot of reasons, a lot of different ways that astrology can help you answer questions. And it's really about finding the astrologers that have the right specialty in the thing that you're needing help with in the moment. So we have all that made very easy for you at astrologyhub.com slash connect right now. And now's the time to check it out and book because the 20% offer will be ending this week on April 30th. So go and check it out. Check out Cameron's page and um, book a reading with him. And Cameron, it's been so great to have you here this week. Such a pleasure as always. Cameron's also going to be teaching with us. It seems like really far away from now, but just like put it, pencil it in your calendar for January of 2024. He's going to be doing a whole experience where we'll be tracking the moon cycle and doing body practices with the moon cycle. So that's going to be super fun. Again, there's no action for you to take right now, but just maybe make a little note of it. If this is something that appeals to you, it's going to be happening in January, right when we're all coming off the holidays and wanting to get back into a nice, solid embodied rhythm. So excited about that, Cameron. Thanks to all of you for being here. Thank you so much for being a part of our community. And thank you as always for making astrology a part of your life. We will catch you on the next episode. Take care.